So let's say you're wanting to create some sort of resource and you don't want to use copyright images. Where can you go to find openly licensed images? Or your students have made a video and they want to include some music in it, but you don't want to get flagged by YouTube as violating copyright when you go to upload their video. I'm going to share with you a few ways to find these sort of uh, creative commonly licensed media, public domain media, and that way you can incorporate those into any kind of open education resource that you are trying to create, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation or something to engage students more directly in the work and the learning that they're doing. Um, and you'll be able to uh, find these sorts of things. This is part of the um, Ready or Not course. And the link to the syllabus is down in the comments or in the description box below. Um, and so please feel free to check out those other resources. Let's get started. My personal favorite place to go is Wikimedia Commons. And if I spell it right, it gets me there a little bit faster, but not too much. Wikimedia Commons is a place where people can upload images. Um, so let's do a search for a leaf. Say I'm, I'm doing some sort of biology presentation um, and I want to include some images of leaves in there. So as soon as I search, all of these user uh, created images or uploaded images will, will be here. And one of my favorite things about Wikimedia Commons is that you can sort by license. So sometimes I want to um, make sure my, my images I'm using are Creative Commonly licensed. And so these categories here get more uh, restrictive, or I guess less restrictive, I should say, as you go down. So this first one is used with attribution and same license. So that's Creative Commons by uh, share alike. And when I click on that, it filters out any images that have a more strenuous set of requirements or restrictions on them than that one. Uh, going down the list, use with attribution, that just means I have to cite the author. So let's say I like this leaf. Um, from this tab, I can see that the author is here and that they're using a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0. So let's say I'm gonna make a slide deck with these. I can copy this image, paste it in. I'm gonna give a new, it's gonna be a little bit ridiculous right now. I've got the image and then either on this slide somewhere or down here in the speaker notes to properly attribute it, I'm just gonna say Uh, leaf image by and then paste in the person's name CC by 3.0. If I'm being even more fantastic, I can copy the link to this image. Ooh, I don't think that's the link I want. I think I want the more details link. So I'm going to copy the link address and then add that as well so that the anyone who's viewing this slide presentation can go to the original image and see the full license. CC BY 3.0 matches what's on here, Creative Commons Attribution 3.0. The attribution license is the BY license. Um, I can also see more details here. This is nice because it gives me this image in a variety of different sizes. Um, I don't often want an image that is this big, but if I wanted a detailed section, I could do that. It also allows you to play this fun game with kids where you can really zoom in on one tiny section of an image and have them guess what it is um, and then kind of gradually expand out. But the larger the image, the greater the file size. So you want to make sure that you're choosing the size of image that you need. Um, I'm pretty happy with the one that was the default here. It's not too big, um, but it's not small or pixelated either. So this will often give you some more information on the image. A lot of this is not stuff that you need to include, um, but it has more information on the license and that sort of thing on here if you're not sure or if you um, just want some clarification. Okay, let's go back to our leaf search. A lot of times I'm when I'm in a rush, I don't want to deal with any kind of attribution. I want public domain images. And so no restrictions will get me the public domain images. These are images that you don't have to cite in any way. Um, they've been released by their authors into the public domain. 
And so you can just use them without any kind of citation or thing like that. And that will be symbolized here by this public domain unlocked item. A lot of times I will still include um, the person's name who wrote it, but say that it's in the public domain. It just depends on how much of a hurry I'm in for things. When you go to this info page, um, the author will say, it will usually say something like this work has been released into the public domain by its author. Um, government organizations a lot of times will release their stuff into the public domain just by virtue of them being taxpayer funded. So like if I wanted to do look at a picture of space um, and look for no restrictions, a lot of these are probably going to be NASA images. And by definition, all the NASA images are public domain, and they usually say something like that when you get down to the license. Not on this one, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's fantastic um, for finding images. I will caution you, um, this is like searching any other image on the internet. These are not all for, um, they're not all school appropriate images, and you wanna be careful what kids are searching if you're having them look for their own stuff on here just as you would on any any internet search. So make sure that your kids are aware of those ways to keep themselves safe from um, things that they maybe don't want to see. Okay. There are other places to find these things, but honestly, I keep finding myself come back to Wikimedia Commons. Um, people are adding images all the time. I've added images here. It's pretty easy to do, and there's a nice uh, broad variety. It can also be um, good for sort of science diagrams. Um, I know the EM spectrum is good. People will translate these into other languages. I can't type and, and talk at the same time. And so if you have students who are um, fluent in other languages or are learning English, uh, this can be nice to offer them something that's in uh, their home language as well as the language they're using at school. You can see this one, we've got Spanish, we've got Arabic. Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure what that is, maybe, maybe Bangla. But the point is that you can find these uh, science diagrams a lot of times in multiple languages where users will take the original graphic and just put their own language over the top of it. Um, and that can be just a nice, a nice point for comparison. Um, I've also used these if I don't want students to be able to read it. Um, if I just want them to focus on the graphics first without necessarily reading the interpretation and maybe come up with some inferences or do some critical thinking about what the, what the visuals are trying to tell you without worried about the words, I've sometimes put um, other languages on there just to add that sort of narrow the focus to the, to the visuals. Okay, let's look for some music. Right, let's check out CC Mixter. So this is where I go to find openly licensed audio files. This would be if you wanted to add them to a video as your little intro and outro music, if you wanted to have background sound throughout something. Um, it's just a nice place to find music that people have uploaded, that they've created, and are willing to have people use. Um, it is time consuming to find audio that you're looking for. Like, usually I'm in the mood for something that feels like it's sort of like an upbeat, poppy kind of thing that would be in the background of some sort of corporate, you know, promotional kind of video. And that's not an easy thing to search for. Um, so anticipate investing some time looking around on the site and listening and trying to find something that fits your um, mood and what you're going for there. So as far as searching, it's super simple. Um, I've got the link to this and all the other websites I've been to down in the description. So you can get to it from there if you like. Uh, you put in your search text. I searched for space a lot. Uh, sometimes I'll put instrumental in there. It's not great at weeding out um, things that have vocals, but usually what I'm looking for is music without vocals. Uh, match any words. I'm going to change to match all words. You can also do match exact phrase, which isn't what I want. And then you can search these different parts of the site. And let's see. I'm not gonna be able to play these clips for you because um, I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to get my audio set up to work so I could hear it and you could hear it at the same time. And I don't wanna just like dub in, it, it, anyway, it's a mess. We're not gonna to listen to these today, but you are more than welcome to if you go on the site. So here you can see a bunch of these um, sort of 
these mp3 files or audio files that people have added in here. If you click on the page, it's down here that you'll press play to listen to the music. Um, you'll notice that they put in a lot of tags for descriptors for what the music is. Um, here it says female vocals, so this one I'm like, oh, there's someone singing in it, not what I'm looking for. Um, but it does often, like, they're usually not singing the entire video. So if you're just looking for a short clip, you can kind of get away with that. Uh, one thing I do want to draw your attention to is this one that says BPM. Most of them are labeled with a BPM, and that stands for beats per minute. Uh, 90 to 95 is, is pretty moderate. It's not, not super fast, not super slow. Um, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more upbeat, you're looking for something in the like 120s kind of range. If you're looking for something that's really slow and calming, that would be more like 80s in there. So you can just click on this and then get a list of um, songs that are tagged with that. Um, and so that's, that's one way that you can find other things. Um, one thing that I will point out, um, well, I'll wait on that for a second. So you'll notice that these have their little CC Creative Commons licenses alongside the music here. Um, this one's just buy. A lot of them on here are buy uh, non-commercial, which means if you're going to be selling the thing that you're using the music in, that's not allowed. So if you're planning on, on selling whatever you're creating, those would be ones to avoid. But um, in most cases, you're not, and so those are fine. You can also find the license on this page right over here. Um, and so that's, that's an awesome way to do it. So the caution that I will give you is that sometimes the musicians have chosen names for themselves or their work that aren't necessarily school appropriate or things I would like on there. Um, and so just like be, be aware of what you have on there. I don't see any that are too terrible right now. Um, but you know, just, just make sure that you're comfortable saying that it's by whoever the actual artist is, if they have it listed CC by. Um, one thing I will say on this site, uh, you'll notice that there's this new samples category. This is, this is, uh, very new to me. I haven't played around with a lot, but basically it's, um, it's different tracks of the music pulled out. So you might have all the audio in one file, the guitar in another, the drums in another. This could be one where you could find good music that's like very simple, um, but doesn't have audio in it there, if that's what you're looking for. Um, you'll notice it's in beta, which it means that it's still being developed. That doesn't necessarily mean it's not working right now, but it does mean the look of it will change. So if you're watching this a while after I've recorded the video, it might not look like this right now. Um, you've got different sort of categories over here that you can check. Like, let's say we want some flute music. This is going to filter it so we're getting anything that has flute music. Um, your BPM over here, you can adjust. So it's in ranges with um, gaps of five. So this is moderately placed flute music. Um, and so this I kind of like here. Um, you can look for certain licenses, free for commercial use or royalty free C++. Again, if you're not, if you're not gonna be selling the work that you're making with this, which is I think most of the time the true in educational settings, you're probably not gonna worry about that. But anyway, this is a great way where you can just add some music in um, to a video that you're creating. If you're not sure how to do that, there's a lot of good editing software out there. Um, and it's really simple usually to just drop in audio tracks. iMovie does that. Um, DaVinci Reserve, sorry, DaVinci Resolve is what I use. And it is, it is a little intimidating. I'm currently editing this video over here. But I do have a tutorial on it for my other course, Digging with Tech, and I'll put the link to that down in the description as well. Um, it's, it's not difficult to, to just drop in an audio track. It looks more intimidating than it is. And it's something that really allows you to make your, um, make your videos more inviting, more enjoyable, and just gives them some depth. So take a look, listen to some music, hopefully you find something you like.